we want volunteering to flourish. We want actually to take volunteering forward from the levels where it sits at the moment, which have been pretty static for the last 10, 15 years, uh, into a, 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 a different, uh, into a different and higher level, um, for all, ki all kinds of reasons, uh, in terms of our vision of society and our desire to strengthen civil society, our desire to to strengthen those social institutions that provide the glue that binds communities uh, together. But <coughs> also, I, just simply because I think it's, it is the right thing to do, it, and not, not least because. Well, I want to try and communicate, or what we have to try and communicate, and try and inspire people. It's just with the just sheer joy of giving, and the sheer joy of helping other people. Uh, and we can talk about all kinds of regulations, stuff, but we have to communicate something that we have to inspire people to think, it is worth my time, giving my time, uh, to help other people. And I, I went to Rwanda earlier this year. I took my 16-year-old son to go and teach English in Rwanda. It was the only way I could think of keeping him out of the pub. <laughs> but uh, he, it was marvellous. And we sat there, a hundred of us, it was a conservative project, Project uh, Umubana, which is uh, magnificent. <coughs> and we sat around in the Butari and drank beer in the evening, and someone said, are we doing it for them, or are we doing it for us? And of course, we, you know, consensus, of course we were doing it for them, but it was an interesting question, because there wasn't anyone on that trip who didn't go back thinking, that was fantastic for me. That was the right thing for me. I got a lot out of it. And that is, that's my experience. Whenever I spend a lot of time talking to people volunteering, whether it's in the cancer shop in Northwood, the ladies there who've dedicated their life for 15, 20 years, who go in there every day because they want to do the right thing, because they want to do good. But actually for them, it's an incredibly important part of their life and their connection with other people and their sense of community. Uh, and it's something about the way that volunteering just can completely improve your quality of life and your sense of yourself that I think we just have to try and communicate and inspire. Uh, uh, what is the role of government? Leadership. You can't expect people to follow unless you take a lead yourself, which is why in our green paper, Voluntary Action in the 21st Century, we set a lot of store by the, the initiative that we would take, which was to send a message to anyone working in a conservative administration that they can take a certain amount of time off per year to volunteer, because we just want to send that strong uh, signal. But it's also about encouraging leadership in other organizations. And I, just to pick one, I think a key key, absolutely key sector of society that needs to be engaged more is the world of business. You know, the events of the last two years have thrown a big question mark about capitalism and, and, and the future of, of, of capitalism and the role of business in society and how businesses should see themselves. Um, and I think there's been a fundamental change in the way that employees, the human assets toiling away in the economy, perceive their employer and how they want to see their employer. And we have to capitalize uh, on this. Because what I get really encouraged about going around uh, is actually talking to British businesses who get this, who attach a lot of importance to developing really meaningful volunteering pro programs, not because of some sense of greater good or altruism, but for one very hard fact, they see it being entirely in their commercial interest to do so. Because that's the way the world works, that's how we're going to make progress. If you go and see that they are driven by commercial motives, they see it in their interest because they recognize their most important assets are human, and that those human assets are demanding different things in the places that they work. And so they attach great importance to developing serious volunteering programs that is in some ways reflect the values of the organization. So one of the most fun things I did was to go and present the volunteering Oscars at the Prudential organization. They'd attached a lot of thought to this. They gave out prizes to the most successful or inspiring volunteering initiatives taken by employees of the Prudential. There were video conferences to, to, to India, from a team there, and it was the chief executive, it was the chief executive of Prudential who gave out the Oscars. Very strong signal of the importance attached to it. And I asked him, why is this so important to you? He said, because the values inherent in these volunteering projects are exactly the kind of values that we want to articulate as embodying the Prudential organization. These are the values that we want to encourage in our workforce, and these projects embody them, teamwork and all that. Uh, and so it's just I, I just think I just think there's a huge opportunity there in terms of the in terms of the in terms of the business sector uh, and it's not widespread it's beacons of best practice that we need to in encourage uh, and there's a tremendous opportunity there. in my in my local area Hillingdon I went to see our Hillingdon Association of Voluntary Services I said look Hillingdon Council has signed up to this national indicator six seven whatever it is about encouraging more volunteering How's it going? How's the relationship working between you 
the local authority and the local business community. And he looked rather blankly at me. And he said, well, it's kind of working all right with the local authority, but we don't really have much to do with the business community. And I think, what an opportunity. What an opportunity, Miss. What a channel of communication we have to open up. Because there you have, sitting in Hillingdon, just to use one example, but Kensington, wherever, all these assets, all these people out there with tremendous skills uh, that they could deploy on behalf of local voluntary organisations. And they haven't been asked. And it's just, you know, leadership is about actually showing the example, but also about encouraging people to make those connections and think about doing things in a, in a different way. I, so I see huge opportunity uh, there. Uh, in, terms of in terms of support, it's clear to me from talking to infrastructure organisations, people who exist to support the voluntary sector, that there is still uh, you know, a need that needs to be funded by the taxpayer uh, for supporting uh, organisations, uh, voluntary uh, third sector organisations, not least in how they manage volunteers. Uh, and the reason why it's put uh, such importance on this is if we want to encourage high levels of volunteering in this country, we've got to create a buzz about it. We've got to have people coming out of these volunteering experiences, going to the pub or the restaurant or sitting at home with the family saying, you really ought to do this, you know, because it's fantastic and I've got a huge amount out of it. And I'm not sure that's happening quite enough and I think that's because in too many occasions the volunteering experience is not rich enough or has not been managed well enough or we've not. Uh, and I think, so that I, I, I do think support is about encouraging and supporting the sector to make sure that the volunteering experience is as rich as it can possibly so that it encourages others uh, to come uh, forward. Um, and then the third aspect in terms of the role of government, uh, I think, is about removing the barriers. It's about trying to remove the reasons to say no. And my God, there are plenty of them. Because of the monster that we have created in terms of uh, protection against risk through health and safety legislation, through the CRB process, through this uh, monster that has been considered now the ISA, which I can't believe, why would anyone want to work with children uh, if they go through that process? Why would I go into a secondary school to talk to children about uh, civic responsibility that if I have to go through this, I have to go through this, this process? The status erected, uh, driven by a different agenda, tremendous barriers, lots of reasons for people to say no. And we have to examine in a very thorough way you know, why, those, why that apparatus, that architecture has been established, whether it's proportionate to the risk that we're trying to protect, and then what can we dismantle, what can we take down so that we remove reasons uh, to say no. And I don't underestimate the challenge of delivering on that agenda. It's very easy for me to stand up and talk about it, but you're talking about breaking, you know, shifting cultural attitudes and changing attitudes to risk in an era where the media are, uh, are dominant and can crucify a politician if, if uh, inappropriate you know, uh, risk management tools are not seen to be uh, in place. But uh, if we don't, if we don't get serious about that, we are in danger of just, just shutting, turning, shutting too many doors on people, making it too difficult. But God, God knows, <coughs> our time, time is precious. The world has changed, demographics have, have changed. Uh, time is precious for people. Uh, and we must try and do our best to remove the reasons uh, to say no and inspire people to say yes, because it is such a fantastically uplifting and rewarding experience, giving your time to help other people. Thank you very much.